Hello, everyone. Good afternoon and welcome to this new episode of our LDI Edge talk series. Today's webinar is an uh, hors série, uh, one actually, uh, I've mentioned this last week. Uh, today we are going to have uh, something out of our traditional format. It will be 15 minutes longer than usual. We will have uh, five speakers instead of four representing different players of an ecosystem of expertise and skills uh, from public and private organization. Um, uh, yeah, so it is important to know actually uh, what this would mean and how to rely to rely on that ecosystem. Um, I would like to welcome today's uh, speakers and guests, Claudine Carrigé from the Ministry of State, Media and Communication Department, Marina Andrieu, Coordinator, Digital Skills and Job Coalitions, Luxembourg, Hartmut Lesch from AMB Software, uh, Mauro Rocco from Cap4 Lab, and Anne Oberle from the University of Luxembourg Competence Center. Um, before going really uh, into each presentation, I would like to remind you, as usual, do not forget to push your questions in the question tab and uh, do not hesitate to, to ask us. And as usual, if you have a lot of questions, we will try to answer um, later after the session, by the end of the session or even uh, by email. Without any further ado, I would like to invite Claudine. Um, to start her talk about how government sets the policies to respond to the market need. Claudine, please. You can, yeah, you can start, Claudine. Hello, uh, my name is uh, Claudine Carriger. Thank you, thank you, Marina, and, uh, and all for inviting me uh, to present uh, at your um, uh, Digital Innovation Hub uh, event today. Uh, I am a senior advisor in the Department of uh, Media, Telecommunication and Digital Policy in the Ministry of State. Our policy action aims to improve Luxembourg's infrastructure and connectivity and to promote technical innovation like AI, blockchain, 5G and HPC and others. We work closely with the public and private uh, sector and stakeholders to empower people to use key technologies and to acquire the necessary skills. The launch of the government's uh, Digital Luxembourg initiative in 2014 has given us a new dynamic with a flexible budget, the kickstarting of concrete uh, digital skills projects becomes possible. For the purpose of today's webinar, I'm only speaking about skills, but uh, Digital Luxembourg is supporting um, a range of other policy issues too. In its um, skills policy, uh, Digital Luxembourg operates with uh, four target groups, uh, use and education, for instance, with coding actions, ICT professionals, uh, there we work to attract high-skilled uh, workforce or promote STEM skills and jobs. Labour force, where it is important to encourage upskilling employees and job seekers and the broader, the broader society. Ongoing efforts consisted uh, in the past to tackle the digital skills gap for basic uh, skills. This process has now gained, as you can see, a certain maturity confirmed by the European, uh, European DESI, DESI, excuse me. This benchmarking uh, is now placing Luxembourg in a front runner position for basic, for basic skills, for basic internet user skills, as you can see on, on this uh, graphic. But meanwhile, growing research and industry activity in technologies like AI, blockchain, 5G, IoT, 
HPC uh, and others, they all call for new levels of skills. And as the government uh, has the ambition to use artificial intelligence to leverage the potential of a data-driven digital society, it is therefore of utmost importance to provide a full spectrum of AI and other advanced digital skills, training and education offers, introducing the elements at primary school and work towards lifelong learning training offers. This starts uh, with the Ministry of Education's new strategy Einfach Digital that aims to introduce coding in school curricula and to focus on uh, computational thinking. Over the last years, Digital Luxembourg has been strongly cooperating with the Ministry of Education to support a variety of coding initiatives like, for example, a new matchmaker platform to be launched this September 2020, helping teachers in need of expertise to have coding workshops organized in their classes with a helping hand from IT volunteers from outside. A call for IT, IT volunteers in this way from the private sector may, for instance, be launched in the frame of the Digital Skills and Jobs Coalition, uh, what uh, Marina, is, Marina Andrieu will talk later about. Then uh, another example is Lux Tech School. It is a three-month course combining programming and business with game, big data, fintech and AI training. For tomorrow's digital leaders, it is offered in an extracurricular program and preferably to um, 15 years and plus. CodeStat is a 10 day uh, developer training for students who have completed their final high school exams or for other young people over 17 years. And these courses are held during Easter and uh, summer holidays. Then uh, an, another example is Modi. It is um, a pilot project in 15 selected primary schools, um, which aims at testing interactive intelligent blocks designed for educational purposes um, that are uh, compatible with, um, with Lego. Advanced digital skills training works best in response to and in collaboration with um, enterprises and industry demand. Therefore, when the um, Devo team and Microsoft first presented their AI Academy to our Digital Luxembourg team, we immediately decided to support this training offer, comprising an AI sensibilization format for C-levels, and a lighter uh, format for developers and students, for instance, to learn to program a chatbot, and also a longer, uh, high level, more uh, in depth ICT specialist format uh, in this uh, program. In the same dynamic, to help our public decision makers to implement AI led administrative services, we had. Um, we had Devo team to, de uh, to develop an AI training uh, for public decision makers uh, too. So this is all organized in, um, in a very flexible, uh, dynamic way. When in 2000, uh, about NVIDIA, when in 2019, the Luxembourgish government signed an MOU with NVIDIA, our researchers and students were given free access to NVIDIA Deep Learning training modules and um, GPU formats. And they uh, also had the possibility to become NVIDIA instructors. Digital Luxembourg pushed this initiative further and uh, cooperates, cooperates 
with the university's center of competence to become an NVIDIA training partner to offer deep learning courses to the industry. Thanks to, uh, thanks to the cooperation with Anne Oberle. And uh, earlier this year, Luxembourg was authorized to rally uh, Künstliche Intelligenz, a KI Campus Consortium, an online platform for innovative, high-quality AI learning contents, permitting Luxembourgish and German AI learning projects to benefit from grants in periodic call for proposals organized by this, by this KI Campus Consortium. And Digital Luxembourg is also promoting generic AI skills for the wider public. In this, we will soon partner with the Finnish Institute Reactor and uh, the University of Helsinki to commonly distribute online training offer called Elements of AI. The course is uh, existing in, uh, in a few languages, so in English and German and uh, soon also in French. We plan to rebrand the skills offer and to systematically promote it for the workforce, for students and also for the public sector. This global skills ecosystem is being naturally enhanced by the Digital Skills and Jobs Coalition. This digital coalition is an exchange platform for all private and public stakeholders involved in the promotion of digital skills. Digital Luxembourg, together with the Chamber of Commerce and the Chamber of Skilled Crafts, Chambre des Métiers, is leading the Digital Coalition Luxembourg with Marina Andrieux from the Association White as a national coordinator. And she will explain the coalition concept to you later on. And in this, I thank you for listening to me. And uh, I invite you to ask questions and to reach out to me via email or other if you, if you wish. Thank you. Thank you so much, Claudine. So indeed, you have questions. I'm going to share the questions on the screen. Uh, so let me start with the first one. I was part of first training with NVIDIA, but in the actual situation, what is the future of NVIDIA deep learning training? Will this continue online or stop? As uh, the NVIDIA deep learning courses are uh, offered uh, via the Centre uh, de Compétences, via the University Centre of Competence. I think that Anne Oberle would be best to answer in this. We'll take it. Yeah, OK. So uh, we will not forget the question, and then we will take it uh, by the end of the session with Anne. Uh, the other one. Uh, what will be the part of virtual reality and augmented reality on the Luxembourg digital learning ambition, public and private? We have augmented uh, reality. Uh, we are encouraging uh, this in the um, uh, in the moment at the moment via our FinFund. Uh, initiative, and uh, it is clearly also um, a domain that we are uh, encouraging. Yeah, and that that's also uh, uh, give me, um, well, I have a question since this question was uh, pushed. Uh, you mentioned that you cover really a wide range of uh, age, starting from the school till the professional and uh, companies. And to ensure this kind of training with uh, digital advanced digital skill, you rely on private sector. Would you explain why this uh, cooperation with the private sector is important for new digital skills, like the one with NVIDIA, of course, and Microsoft? Yeah, the cooperation with, uh, the, with, with private actors is um and interaction with uh, private um, 
training content uh, industry is important for us to get tailor-made AI and other advanced uh, skills uh, training to get such training offers uh, implemented, for instance, uh, to um, in the frame of uh, our recent AI-led uh, transformation of public sector applications and uh, to help uh, public actors and, of course, to help uh, private actors. And also, as I mentioned before, um, when there will be this, when uh, Minister Maes announced coding um, in, the, um, in a mandatory way in curricula, school curricula, and teachers are encouraged to, um, to lead coding workshops, there, uh, therefore, it is also important to have good contacts with um, with the training uh, content industry, to or with the industry in general, with the private sector, to have uh, IT volunteers to give teachers a hand uh, in organizing workshops, and the matchmaking, uh, the meeting, and the um, the, the time uh, timeline uh, matchmaking can be made uh, made via an, uh, a dedicated um, matchmaker platform. Okay, so um, there are no questions so far. Thank you, Claudine. Stay with us in case there are more questions, and we will try to answer by the end of the session. Thank you. I would like to introduce now. Um, Marina Andrieu, Coordinator, Digital Skills and Job Coalition, uh, Luxembourg. Marina, she will present uh, why the collaboration is important, why is it uh, very important to share and build community around the skills. So, uh, thank you, Marina. Uh, the floor to you. Okay. So, um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, so, as mentioned earlier, I'm Marina Andrieu. I'm the coordinator for the Digital Skills and Job Coalition Luxembourg. Uh, first of all, thanks for inviting me to join uh, today for this uh, special ses session with um, many uh, guest speakers. Um, so uh, I will uh, explain uh, today what is the Digital Skills uh, and Jobs Coalition in Luxembourg and what we are trying to uh, to achieve. So uh, our mission is uh, it's quite simple: it's working together to close the digital skills uh, gap in, in Luxembourg. Just to give you a bit of uh, background. Uh, the Digital Skills and Job Coalition is initially an initiative from the EU, so it was uh, launched by the Commission a few years ago. Uh, the Commission encouraged all member states to have a national coalition in order to see um, stakeholders, either private or public, working together to tackle the lack of digital skills in each member state. Um, in Luxembourg, uh, the coalition has been set a few years ago uh, and uh, with a, a new updated concept launched last year. Uh, nowadays, we have around 60 members uh, in Luxembourg and 50% uh, private sector, 50% uh, public sector. So what are the objectives for the national coalition? Um, so basically, we are we have a role to, uh, of a facilitator, and we want to co connect public authorities, businesses, very important, education, training providers, and we want to encourage uh, these uh, players to take concrete action to bridge the digital skills gap that we experience uh, in the EU and in Luxembourg uh, today. Uh, our philosophy is to be open to all relevant uh, stakeholders, so uh, anyone, any organization interested to contribute into the topic is very welcome to join. And in fine, we want to support member states and the Commission uh, to develop uh, national digital skills strategies. 
In Luxembourg, um, as I said, the, the coalition is um, supported by the governing board since 2019, and this is when I jumped in to, to, to be the coordinator. Uh, our um, governing board is uh, composed of Digital Luxembourg, so with uh, Claudine, uh, Minister d'État, Service des Media et des Communications, uh, Chambre de Commerce, especially via uh, House of Training, and um, Chambre des Métiers. So as you can see, public-private uh, partnership and uh, in having the two chambers um, as member, we cover 100% uh, of the private companies um, in Luxembourg. We also have uh, other active uh, members uh, and partners such as uh, Ministre, Ministère de l'Education, um, Script, you know, which is the um, innovation agency from, the, from this ministry, as well as ADEM. To mention a few. So, what is the added value for our members, for the stakeholders, and for the ecosystem? When we uh, when we decided to make new plans for the, the coalition, we we talk a lot to our members, and uh, we wanted to see what where the need where the need of a, of the ecosystem, and this is what we've seen. Um, as you know, there are already many. Uh, initiatives uh, in terms of digital skins in Luxembourg, but we also uh, recognize that there is a need for better visibility of a project, so this is what we're trying to work on. Uh, also, um, we address the need for matchmaking. Uh, we see uh, many uh, good ideas, many new projects which are launched, and we're really trying to connect them with the right uh, resources and also with the right decision makers in order to make this project happen and also to scale if they have a uh, good potential. And uh, more importantly, we're really trying to work with projects to contribute to, uh, to make um, an impact. So what are the priorities and topics for Luxembourg? Here again, uh, we, we talk a lot. Uh, uh, with our community of, of members, and we've seen clearly three priorities for uh, many stakeholders um, in Luxembourg. The first one um, is education. Well, uh, Claudine presented the um, selection of good projects in education uh, in Luxembourg, but we also see that uh, many organizations, employers, companies, are really uh, willing to create new links with education. And uh, through the coalition, we're really uh, trying to encourage collaboration between education and the workplace. A topic which also is uh, utterly ex um, um, important for many of our stakeholders is um, training, upskilling, and reskilling. So the, the question of uh, giving the right skills um, to the people still in initial training, but also uh, those already working and want to upgrade their skills or retrain to new jobs. And uh, we really um, make, um, make sure to map and to be aware of everything which is going on um, in terms of training um, to, in IT and digital in Luxembourg. And uh, last topic, which is very important, especially in Luxembourg, it's how companies can find the IT specialists, the IT experts, and the talents that they need uh, for their project. Uh, I guess, uh, from my experience, talking to a lot of companies, number one priority when, when it comes to HR, uh, where do I recruit the IT specialists? that I need, um, and uh, we're really trying to promote Luxembourg and, uh, as, a, as a great place for IT professionals. So uh, what is the concrete work for the coalition in, in Luxembourg? So obviously, um, uh, well, I, I described the collaboration that we support, uh, and is, we believe that collaboration is really, really important to set new projects to reduce the digital skills and jobs gap. 
uh, we are uh, very active, uh, engaging and uh, managing our community with our members. Um, so this is why we are trying uh, to organize different activities to uh, we listen a lot to our members i have to say and we really organize and offer activities which are matching with uh, their needs and uh, which are uh, bringing them new information and, and value um, we also um, active in promoting uh, all eu initiatives in terms of digital skills and digital jobs as you might know the commission is quite active uh, with policies and programs, uh, sometimes uh, grants and financial support as well uh, in the field of digital skills and jobs. So we want to make sure that the community in Luxembourg is well aware of all these possibilities and opportunities. Um, and in general, we really try to articulate the work of the coalition with what has been done at the commission level. And uh, finally, bring concrete outcomes. I think um, uh, which is um, very interesting within the coalition is all the members, all the, all the, all the people who are attending our meetings are really looking to um, bring some concrete solution to uh, work together and to have a, a positive impact. And uh, this is why personally I was uh, very keen to, to call um, coalition so we leave a message uh, the coalition is a platform for you to have your say uh, on the topic of digital skills and jobs in Luxembourg um, so we have set a, a website digitalcoalition.lu um, there was a demand for many uh, stakeholders to have one place where all the digital skills um, and jobs initiative will be listed so we did uh, that job uh, last year. So if you go on this on the website, you will see all the projects. Uh, it could be education, it can be retraining, it can be basic skills, so expert skills. Uh, all the projects currently running in Luxembourg are listed on, on the website. Uh, we also give a space for our members to promote our news, uh, their news, the events. Uh, we share a lot of publication from the EU, other um, interesting uh, publication. And uh, we have a section as well for pledges. Uh, I will explain uh, this a bit later. But uh, basically, the, the Commission is encouraging uh, companies and, and organization of, to make pledges uh, for a central tool that they have develop, developed, developed, uh, um, at EU level, so we're really trying to encourage a uh, Luxembourgish company to make pledges uh, into this tool, and we also collect uh, more local pledges uh, from Luxembourg. So here again, uh, this website is mainly uh, designed to give information and to give visibility to the project in Luxembourg. Just to give you a few ideas on the activities that we have conducted uh, lately. So we have regular members meetings. So um, let's say every two months. So uh, usually it was um, real meetings. We, see, we also had to switch to online meetings uh, more recently. Uh, but we were trying to focus on a topic of interest for our members. So we organize a members meeting on education, on a retraining initiative, uh, we're planning new ones on AI later uh, this year. So we're really trying to listen to the members and organize um, meeting with relevant content uh, with them. We also uh, um, produce uh, ad hoc events uh, according to uh, what's going on in digital skills and job um, field. Uh, last year, we had a very successful event uh, during the 5G conference in December and um, we actually brought uh, 15 professionals of uh, 5G uh, um, and uh, they met with um, 60 students from Lycée and BTS and they had the chance to have a conversation around future of work and 5G successful and um, I can really see that companies are really keen to speak um, with uh, young people, get their advice, uh, get the insights. So that's really a good example of a, 
uh, an activity that we organized to uh, create links between uh, industry and education. Uh, also, I wanted to mention uh, another project uh, that we have, that's the Digital Skills Matchmaking event. Um, powered by uh, Digital Luxembourg. Uh, this event was supposed to happen in, in May this year, but we decided to postpone it at a later stage. And the idea is that uh, we organize a matchmaking event uh, between companies and um, initiative offering uh, digital skills and looking for support. So here again, um, the um, the, the idea of this event is to involve uh, the private sector and to ask the private sector to, to contribute in um, uh, to this uh, numerous initiative for digital skills. So, um, if you want to get involved as a member, you're obviously uh, very uh, very welcome. Uh, it's um, it's free of charge for members, as uh, as we have a Chambre de Commerce and Chambre des Métiers, as well as uh, supporting the initiative and with uh, together with the Ministry of State. Um, so why becoming a member? So obviously uh, making a con direct contribution on the topic of digital skills in Luxembourg, access networking opportunities, share best practices and give more visibility to your own digital skills project and uh, more having um, what we're looking for for members it's also a commitment we will we want our members to be active to be involved to be able to share ideas and offer concrete commitment to to the topic um i think i went through uh all the information that you should know about the skills and job uh, coalition i'm just going back to my presentation um, if you want to know more you can uh, obviously uh, reach me um, on the email and you also have a linkedin page that you can uh, follow and uh, through this linkedin page we are sharing all the news from our members and from our ecosystem so it's a good source of information on digital skills uh, uh, in Luxembourg uh, if you have any Thank question you. Uh, please feel free. yes you have a question Marina yes uh, okay. so maybe I will go for one the first one and then you can yeah. uh, reply by you know chat that will give the opportunity so to other to see what you are going so I'm going to share only the first one Will this be somehow accelerated to overcome the current situation? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, this is actually something I'm um, looking at at the moment. What is the impact uh, of the current situation uh, on digital skills? And we see, we saw clearly uh, two important uh, topics to address. First, digital skills. Um, Basic digital skills. Uh, with obviously, a lot of um, companies has to have to go remote. Uh, all of a sudden, uh, uh, a lot of small companies have to reinvent themselves and realize that if they were not online already, uh, well, they were um, out of business. So, obviously, um, going in this direction to see what are the digital skills that people are missing uh, when we're going through this kind of crisis, it's going to be um, an important topic for us in the next, next couple of months and um, something else I'm also investigating at the moment and I'm talking to quite a few companies it's um, what will be the market in terms of IT skills and IT expert skills um, obviously we know that there was a big need during uh, the last couple of weeks for security experts data experts to respond very quickly to the to the situation uh, what we would like to know um, for the, the future, for the next couple of months and toward 2020 and 21, um, what will be the state of demand for uh, this expert? Obviously, uh, these jobs were already in tension uh, in the past, so I don't think uh, this is going to change a lot. It will be still a big need for recruiting IT experts in Luxembourg and in Europe. Yes, thank you, Marina. There is a question in the chat, two questions, and I have one if you can even maybe reply in the chat. I would like you to give an example because this is the question. Uh, it looks, uh, the, I'm going to share it finally. So please, when I look to the members, it's only big companies 
are you offering to become member for small digital company? So my question on top of that would be, yes, would you give us example of your members? In terms yeah. of size so, as and I said, we, yeah, yeah uh, we, we're quite proud because we, were, we managed to have a very um, balanced uh, um, type of members. So we have uh, obviously quite a few members from the public sector, can it be ministries, but also uh, national agencies, public agencies. Um, in terms of companies, um, obviously you have a huge corporation which are already active working on digital skills and job at a commission level. So obviously I'm um, mentioning Microsoft, um, Amazon uh, and so on, because those companies have already active link uh, um, with yeah, with a commission, but in Luxembourg, um, yeah, we have all kind of companies. We have small consulting firm. We have even a few independent uh, um, yeah. consultants. Uh, we have also NGOs which are members. So definitely not um, only uh, from a big corporation because what I see as well, it's big corporation have big plans. It can be national European for digital skills. It's also very nice to work with um, national local companies to have a maybe a better adaptation to the, the need of a of a market in Luxembourg, which can be different from one country to a, um, to another. Uh, so yeah, it's open to to anyone, even if you you just alone or you, if, if you have no staff, you still very welcome to join. Thank you so much, Marina. I think these questions are never end and a lot of interesting, uh, the topic is interesting and, and it really shows between what Claudine presented in you and the others, the coming, how that ecosystem is so important together, yeah, in terms of partnership. Now, I would like to invite Hartmut Klush, Business Development Director at AMB Software, Partner, he, uh, Hartmut, he will present uh, how developing new partnerships that provides new source of value and expertise is so important. Yeah, thanks, Marina. Uh, thanks, John Paul and Natalie, uh, for inviting me for the uh, talks today. Uh, Hello, everybody. Um, it's a pleasure to have the opportunity to pre talk to you about uh, development of innovation through partnerships. Um, before I start presenting you our way of collaboration and giving you some examples what we have reached in partnerships, I would like to shortly introduce myself and AMB software. Um, let me have a link. So, looks like we have a small technical problem. You, here, here you are, it works. It works, perfect. Yes. So, uh, now it works perfectly. Also, again, uh, let me introduce shortly myself and AMB Software. Um, as uh, Marina has said in the introduction, I'm Hartmut Lösch. I'm uh, serving as a business develop development director for AMB Software now for nearly three years. And uh, I'm responsible for the activities in the markets of Germany, Austria, Switzerland. And if everything works out, hopefully also soon in Luxembourg. AMB Software is a medium-sized um, a software development company based in Berlin and Jelona Gora in Poland. Um, I'm speaking today out of uh, Lux, uh, out of Betzdorf, not the Betzdorf you know from Luxembourg. I'm located on the German side in Betzdorf, in Rheinland-Palatinate, which is only two hours away from uh, Luxembourg uh, by car. Um, when um, I talk about AMB software, I have to mention that we are a family company, medium sized, we employ nearly 60 um, developers and software engineers. We are 20 years in the business and at the end of this year, we can celebrate our 20 years anniversary. Most of our uh, engineers and developers are very experienced. They have more than eight years of working experience. And uh, in the last 20 years, 
Yes, we have done a lot of big projects with um, international and um, 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 corporations and companies with the six and seven digit budgets. Um, I also like to introduce you to Juanita, my CEO, because when we are talking about collaborative um, um, work and a collaborative approach, um, I need to mention her because she has built really an agile corporate culture in the last 20 years, which keeps our developers happy, foster innovation and attracts talent. When you ask yourself, how did you, how is she doing it? Then I can only say what I've learned in the last three years. She keeps an eye on details, set up teams with people who fit with each other or to each other, spend time uh, in, and spend time in the right way, have the right skill set. And when it's needed, she takes the time to talk to everybody to solve uh, problems which can occur when you are doing software projects you know, on a larger scale. AMB Software uh, is active in six more uh, business segments. We are doing software development, IT outsourcing, nearshoring, IT consulting, product lifecycle management, cloud services, and also Internet of Things. And when you ask yourself, how do we bring this software development and nearshoring service into our partnership and client, client relations, I need to mention uh, Scrum. Uh, I think this uh, uh, Bible, uh, the uh, art of the Scrum framework um, is definitely the DNA of our company. We strongly believe in Scrum. And for those of you who are not so familiar with Scrum, Scrum is more or less the revolutionary approach to project management and team building that is transforming the way business operate. Or in other words, according to the co-creator of Scrum, Jeff Sutherland, Scrum is the art of doing twice the work in half of the time. And to manage all the technologies which you see on the right hand side within our ICT world, we built dedicated Scrum teams to support our clients and partnerships. Being a Scrum master by myself, I can assure you Scrum works perfectly. And when I, um, and I also have prepared three examples of partnerships. Um, which I like to present you, which we fulfilled with life with our dedicated Scrum teams and how we reach uh, a, um, a very sound kind of collaboration. The first example I like to show you is Rewe Digital. Rewe Digital is part of the Rewe Group, a big retailer in Germany. And Rewe Digital is really shaping the digital future of retail retail and it's a driving force within the Rave Group to, to develop the perfect digital supermarket with state-of-the-art logistics in the back end. Just try it out by yourself and you will discover a lot of innovations by shopping your groceries online, mobile or just by using the click and collect services. For us as the company, it is a pleasure to be involved in the further development of the Rave Marketplace in collaboration with the Scrum teams from Rave, Rave Digital and Commerce Tools, which is um, uh, an investment of Rave, which provides the environment and the, provides partly the micro-based architecture, the APIs, the cloud and headless approach to the Rave Marketplace. Just uh, yesterday, Forrester named Commerce Tools as the leading B2C commerce suite, giving its customers a commerce platform for building visionary commerce experiences. Apart from this B2C uh, example, I also have prepared a B2B example for you, which is Wer um, liefert was, or now it's called Visible. In English, we say who delivers what. And this is the number one research tool for professional buyers in Germany and with Europages, the leading B2B buying source in Europe. Our Scrum teams work primarily remote with the client teams in Berlin, in Paris, in Hamburg, and in Jelona Gora in a well-orchestrated 
uh, manner and it works out very well. The last example I like to present you uh, is the Ecotech um, 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 system. And it, it is an example for partnership and collaboration. Originally, I planned to be today also in Luxembourg, not only with you, I planned to attend the Cleantech Forum, but due to the coronavirus, this event has been canceled. And therefore, I'm grateful today having the opportunity to present this perfect innovative, innovative partnership to you. Ecotech is an incentive-based recycling system, which we have introduced in partnership with Coca-Cola the city of Warsaw and other partners last year. Based on individual rewards for waste, this cloud-based platform works with an app, including a QR code to identify the user. You take your app, identify yourself with your QR code at the machine, put your used in bottle or can into the machine and get directly on your app a voucher with a discount um, for a coffee or et cetera. Last year, we started the project um, in Warsaw in December. We just placed 10 recycling machines, collected and collected glass and plastic bottles and cans. Um, 20,000 people downloaded the app on iOS and Android, and more than 200,000 items were collected, which is in some um, an amount of 10 tons of collected waste um, all together. And um, if you are interested in more facts about it, uh, just contact me uh, under my phone, under my email or on LinkedIn. And I'm looking forward to get uh, an, uh, in touch with you to talk about the project mentions or other topic today. I like to thank you for your attention and your time and uh, looking forward to the speakers behind. Thank you so much, uh, Ahmut. It, it is really very interesting, the example that you showed um, about how this partnership is so important and why to use these advanced digital skills and not only in coding, but also like Scrum, like uh, cooperation that is also complementary so it is pushing the innovation oh, my phone uh, sorry it is pushing the innovation uh, into a company how though based on your experience uh, you will structure this ecosystem with the companies but we have learned that uh, when you uh, want to have an um, innovative culture within your company organization or even in the ecosystem, it's important to put uh, uh, interdisciplinary teams together. That means people with different backgrounds, put them together in a room, uh, do a hackathon. Um, this really creates an atmosphere that you reach and gain new innovation. And also talk, uh, think about age um, clusters, uh, put the young ones into the group, yeah. let the old ones learn from the young ones, the, the uh, young ones learning from the old ones. And this kind of atmosphere of bringing people with different backgrounds together helps a lot to foster innovation. Yes, so uh, that is really very important. I'm looking if we have some questions. Um from the audience no anyhow uh Hartmut, keep an eye on on the chat questions may come later so you will answer uh live thank you so so much and uh, now i would like to uh leave the floor um to mauro rocco mauro is the ceo of cap4 lab mauro is going also he is going to uh present how important this uh partnership and ecosystem on a particular, uh, let's say, digital skill, which is really related to APIs. Yeah. Hello, good morning, everyone. So thank you. I'm going to share my presentation. OK. So yes, uh, the topic is API in the sense where we're going to talk about what are APIs and why they are important, especially in the industrial sector. 
and why they are kind of a need for all other digital evolution and technologies, including artificial intelligence um, and so on. Why data and ac that accessibility is really important in this context, and also for the kind of skill set or skill gap uh, that is there, and uh, how company can uh, can uh, can work on this. So, quick introduction about Cap for Lab to give you some context and. Uh, uh, most of the content of this presentation will be basically talking by experience, experience with a project with customer, experience with a digital transformation, uh, experience in reconverting customer workforce to work on new projects and new technologies. Um, so we are basically a leading company in, in Europe based in Luxembourg, but we work in three countries, in five different countries. And uh, uh, our main focus is API strategy. So basically opening up data uh, to create a new partnership uh, internally, externally, really working on a strategy of uh, opening up your data via reusable services. So this is really our core business. Um, we are present, of course, uh, in, in different countries. We are customer all around Europe. Uh, of course, typical for Luxembourg, we have a lot of different nationalities, uh, quite flexible. We have quite an engagement also with women. We try to, to have a given quota of uh, engineer position that are for women, actually. And um, our expertise is, re is really not only in implementation and technical, but is also on change management, evangelization, internal training. So when we, when we follow a customer on an API strategy, on a transformation journey, we do take care not only of the technical aspect, but also from the organizational point of view, change management, and therefore also training the reconversion of resources because this is quite an important question for customer every time they, they, they go down this new road of innovation, right? Um, thanks to this experience, uh, cup lab is part of cup group and uh, cup group also launched recently cup for learning it is a doc lifelong training institution. We work in France, we work also here in Luxembourg uh, with different actors. And we try to uh, take this experience that we have on the field and moving in a more uh, structured training for our customers, uh, for end people, for institution, and so on. So let me go to the topic now, because I think I talked enough about myself and the company. So um, I want to talk about APIs, especially in the industrial sector, uh, why they are actually needed. Or maybe already what is an API, because it depends, right? So this is a word I think everyone is hearing every time, right? Uh, so in industrial sector, people that are working in industry, they, they are probably quite familiar with it because API is just an interface between two softwares. And actually in industry, PLC programming and this kind of stuff, that's something you are used to work with. Today, although in an ever-connected world, when we speak about API, we normally refer to web API. So basically all the services that are running behind your mobile app on some server or on some cloud and are exchanging data that are needed, right? So from now on, I'm going to use the term of API to refer to web API or API that are uh, um, uh, created to exchange data over the network, right? So in industry, that's something that is already used. Uh, there is already, and if probably in the audience, there is someone working already in industries, and I'm quite sure they're already using APIs to collect data from the different machine or factory floors and to try to analyze them, to run algorithms for preemptive maintenance, to detect if a system is going to fail or not, and so on. That's not something new, OK? Um, in general, they're also used at more higher level in sales department to integrate uh, stock data or order data with uh, CRMs and to support sales uh, um, uh, teams around the, world, around the world if you are like a global company and so on. Um, Again, reporting, when you have a lot of factories scattered around the world or in Europe with different ERP system, you want to collect the data to have a centralized reporting for the decision makers. And API are normally what fools this. And that's it's like, it's not industry 4.0. That's, that's today. And probably some companies are even way more advanced than this. Some maybe are not yet there, but that's normal. I mean, that's that's the evolution of the, of the, of the industry, right? Um, when we go to talk to our industrial customer, there is a, still a bit of misconception about opening up data. Um, this is not true for everyone, okay? So I'm speaking on extreme cases. So this is a quote 
uh, of a sentence that I hear often, say, we just need to produce more efficiently, and this is how we make money. That's our job. That's what we do. We, for example, in manufacturing, that's that's how it works. Um, actually, I don't think this is always true, because uh, this might not be true because you might build up other services on the lifetime of your products. Okay, even if they are not necessarily technological product, right? Um, if you think out of the box. Uh, you might understand that you have new revenue stream that can come from an API or an open strategy, right? Um, here I mentioned Internet of Things, but a lot of things can make can be API ready. And I think you had someone from an R&D department in a previous talk here on Lux Innovation that uh, has bottle caps with RFID chip in it. And probably when you scan this RFID, there is an API you can call to get information, right? So they have to build this API to, uh, to deliver this information, right? So um, we have to learn to think a bit outside the box. Again, there is a lot of players also in Luxembourg that are already quite advanced on this. Huh? So, but the, the industry is big and there are different types of industries. So it's not always the case. Um, in terms of partnership, and when I speak about partnership, I, I really speak in a lot of different senses, not only business. API for me is the foundation. To be able to have a productive partnership with a business partner, you need to share information. How you do share information in an efficient way, probably not via mail, especially if you want to automate things and go faster, you're probably gonna do it via web API or API over the network, right? It's better to integrate yourself with your supplier, with your contractors. You might reduce your stock because you order only when you really need it. Therefore, you're saving money and so on and so on. But at the same time, you could push the envelope and open some of your API services or maybe even some of your data and let other people uh, uh, create products and services on top of this. And this is also possible in industry, not for all type of industry, for, of, for sure. But I mean, everyone knows that today data is money. And even manufacturing companies have some data that has some value. And this can be actually reused or used, or people can build services on top of this. So this is also a way to create partnership with people that, are, that have different and completely different skills, right? They might see something in this that you cannot see. And this helps actually and foster innovation, right, and discussion. Um, all of this is to say that API for me is a foundation, the base of innovation. We talked about artificial intelligence. We can build uh, complex algorithms, but there is one thing that artificial intelligence needs to be efficient, and it's data, data, and data, and a lot of data. So if your system are not capable to talking, or uh, your IE is not capable to talking to your system or retrieve the data, your IE is not efficient. So it's kind of a prerequisite for everything that is innovation based on data. So, and sometimes company forgets this, you know, uh, and uh, that's why I think it's really important. Uh, there is of course a gap of skill because you have to imagine that also for the people that are working for us that of course are integration engineer or API developer, they are not writing code for humans, right? They are not writing a website that is gonna be uh, browsed by a, by a person. They are writing maybe API. They are going to be used by artificial intelligence. They might have to write APIs that an artificial intelligence or a computer is capable to navigate on their own. This means that you don't have to think in the same way, right? So uh, in general, there is also a lot of security, generic IT skills, and so on that comes into it. And it's like we have less of um, knowledge linked to a web development or this kind of graphical application or front-end development. And we have way more uh, core knowledge of IT. So networking, protocols, and often if we speak about manufacturing, this mixes with knowledge of specific protocols of the sector that sometimes are quite old protocols, 10, 15 years. So you really need to master uh, the basic skills of computer network to be able even to write APIs in this domain, right? So it's not easy, let's put it this way, but it also brings some advantages that I'm gonna explain later. So 
we, what we saw, this is my personal opinion, okay? And I'm not talking badly about universities. Uh, maybe I just spoke with bad students, so bear with me with this. But we see that in general, in some universities, there is a strong focus on uh, what is fancy and uh, uh, front end and full stack and let's learn 10 different programming languages. And then when we ask to someone how uh, the basic of the internet works or the basic of computer network works, they cannot answer. That's a problem. When you work in automation in industry and in APIs, that's essential. So it's a bit strange that when you do a computer science course, you get out with all this experience, but it's like you are missing some fundamentals, right? But again, this is just a trend, something we are, we are seeing. Uh, but on the other end, we also have a lot of students and people getting out of university that they prefer to choose a job in R&D where they can learn all these things that maybe they missed uh, more than get for a, go for a better paid job and so on. So there is also a kind of return of interest uh, from, uh, from young people or not uh, to the basics, uh, to the understanding that is not the last JavaScript framework that it might gonna be needed in this digital transformation journey. I'm not saying it's not important. Huh? I'm just saying that in this context of API uh, is less important. So, um, and that's also give you, uh, it, it gives you a lot of, of talented people that are really willing to learn. Um, for me, what is important is really upskilling and reconversion. In fact, what we saw with a lot of customers is that people that are already working in a given sector, especially in manufacturing, they already have 70, 80% of this knowledge, of basic knowledge. If you're an automation engineer, you have a huge knowledge that is way more complicated um, uh, to, to, to learn at study or university, especially if you don't do uh, specific uh, courses for automation engineer and so on. And these people, for them, it's easy to switch working on APIs. They will need 20, 30% of knowledge. Independently of their age, they can be really productive on this, right? So mixing the team is also really important. Young, experienced people, they, if they work together, this can create a lot of efficiency because this exactly is gonna cover a bit of this gap. And we saw it more than one time. Um, we don't have to underestimate that even young graduates from the best school, they're probably gonna need upskilling, especially in some sector. In, and I will say the manufacturing is a really complex one uh, that really requires experience. So the final thing is you really need to have a pattern of learning together. Classroom training might not be always the, the best one, it depends. Uh, when you do reconversion, sometimes other forms like online courses can be more efficient because people, they feel more comfortable, okay? Especially when you have mixes classes and you have, you have to pay with a human factor. Um, learning on the workplace by the peers, for me, it's a game changer. If you can organize your company to encourage this, that's going to make a difference. And then my personal suggestion, I'm not going to say that it's not working, but maybe creating separate poll for do innovation where you say to your people, these people, they're gonna innovate. You are the old dinosaurs. Maybe not the best approach for upskilling too, but that was a bit my conclusion because it's something I see quite often. So I'm, I'm sorry if I'm being a bit provocative, but bear with me. So <laughs> thank you so much. That's my contact. You can get in touch via mail or of course in the question here in the chat. Thank you so thank you much, everyone. Mauro. So you, you mentioned really very interesting, and then you shared with us very interesting thought. And I agree that absolutely APIs today is the right digital skill to cope with the new trend technologies. And this is where companies need to really, um, you know, um, invest, I would say, really. So, but what kind of profile in the manufacturing companies uh, are the most suitable, you know, for reconversion to API uh, skill and integration? Well, I think that in general, people that are working in manufacturing, uh, they have a strong background, technical background, especially mm -hmm. on uh, everything that is network, like, because that's how it works on a production line. So ev everyone that is capable of working on a PLC, on a robot, or on a production machine is actually capable of writing okay. APIs. Yeah. So, so generally, everyone is really dealing with data, right? So, uh, yeah, 
that is going to take this information from a production site or even yeah. for automation processes, automation and any other yeah. uh, domains. Okay. Sure. Thank you so much, Paro. Um, again, guys, if you have any question, go ahead and uh, write your question in the tabs. Now, I'm going to welcome the last speaker. Anne Oberle, and she is the general director of the University of Luxembourg Competence Center. Uh, she will present us uh, what this competence center is doing and the offer that they have and how they are again also working in a partnership with the other companies. Okay, uh, thank you for inviting me today. I'm very proud to have the opportunity to present you the, uh, the activities of the Competence Center. And I have to say that speaking after tomorrow is a big challenge, but uh, of course I totally agree with him. It's very, very important to combine uh, not only academic knowledge, but also very practical experience. Um, well, so I'm the Managing Director of the Competence Center. Uh, which uh, was created two years ago by two stakeholders, the University of Luxembourg uh, and the Ministry of Higher Education and Research. Our main missions are to organize the university continuing education. Um, I mean by continuing education certificates, uh, giving uh, ECTS to participants and a certificate with the seal of the university. We are also in charge of lifelong learning, meaning short courses with a duration ranging from half an hour, uh, sorry, half a day uh, to many different days, five, 10. But uh, in case you want to have ECTS, you need to have at least uh, 250 hours of working load. We also are in charge of uh, working on projects linked to the development of skills. Um, so, you know, we are not only organizing training sessions, but also projects. So, uh, we, can, we are a kind of spin-off of the university, which gives us um, the chance to be very flexible and uh, responsive when we receive requests from the market. We closely work with partners uh, just to be able to know the needs and requirements and to be very close to the needs, uh, because of course the needs analysis is the first step uh, before delivering uh, the, the perfect training session. And I would say that the obvious added value we have is that we propose a unique offer on the market uh, with a combination of the, um, the experience and expertise of um, professors and researchers from the university, but also uh, professional experts and, of course, our team's experience in the field of continuing education. We are organized into pools of expertise. So just to, to make a short list, we are very active in the healthcare sector, um, in the financial and legal sectors. But today I would like to focus more on ICT and digital learning hubs. Uh, this hub is divided into two sub hubs. One is more focused on the way we can deliver digital learning sessions with very, um, I would say, pedagogical activities that are meeting the needs and requirements of our uh, clients. Uh, by clients, I mean public or private clients. And we organize open sessions as well as dedicated training sessions for very tailor-made uh, needs. Uh, so, a part of the team is really, really uh, highly skilled in digital learning and whatever the, um, the area of expertise, even for from finance sector to healthcare, we provide different way of learning. We combine uh, our approach to what we know from neurocognitive sciences, because it's very important for us to uh, to mix what we know from the behavior and the way we learn to our own expertise. 
And the second part of uh, this hub is dedicated to ICT training sessions. I give you here an example of what we can do. Uh, the topic we can propose are HPC, of course, because uh, it's up to date. We closely work with professors of the university and Pascal Bouvry, for example. Uh, we also propose uh, courses for data science, cloud computing, etc. And uh, we are the key partners for NVIDIA. As uh, uh, Claudine said previously, we organize courses with NVIDIA on deep learning. And just to answer the question I received half an hour ago, we will, of course, organize new sessions. We are still not knowing how, if it's remotely or face-to-face uh, -face session, because the university is closed until the end of the summer. So. Let me just think about uh, the way we can organize the session and we will come back to, to our participants. Uh, we also have a strong partnership with the CSL to propose courses with the Cisco Networking Academy on cybersecurity, IoT, programming and coding. And these courses are uh, uh, free for students at the university. So, just to get to the point uh, on how being more innovative, I wanted to show you this example uh, on the MOOC we are currently organizing with cap for lab and Moro. Uh, this is a MOOC on machine learning in an industrial environment. This is um, a project supported financially and actively supported by uh, the Ministry of Higher Education and Research and by uh, the Service des Media et des Communications. Um, this is an example of what we can propose remotely for a very large audience based at the same time here in Luxembourg, but also in Germany. We want to organize a package of 50 hours of teaching. Uh, in this package, we want to split different uh, time slots of learning, and we include 15 remote teaching hours. Uh, we strongly believe that involving, engaging participants is the key to success for MOOCs because we have such an experience on the mother, on a, on a mother MOOC we are currently organizing for the European Commission. But um, we, we strongly think that uh, having uh, participants who can uh, communicate together, work together, is key for success for remote training. So um, this is uh, the detailed content of what we want to propose, including machine learning tools, APIs fundamentals, cloud computing basics, and so on. I will just uh, let you read uh, the detailed content. But this is an example of what we can organize. Another example about attracting and retaining talent, because this is something very difficult here in Luxembourg, provided that you come from the public sector, for example. Um, the European Commission had to face um, a big problem two years ago, and I can't believe that it's still the case, because they have problem being aligned with uh, the level of salary um, proposed here in the private sector. So the big challenge is to attract and retain talent for the uh, IT teams. And they came to us asking for an academy that we would organize for um, a, ta a specific target audience composed of people having a strong experience of at least five to 20 years in ICT or digital transformation. And the topic was, of course, data science. So um, it was quite challenging because we had, on one side, our professors who said, oh, we have to summarize a training that we are used to delivering to, 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 to our students within 30 hours. And Anne, you are asking us to organize it within two or three hours. How can we do that? And we thought about the way we could arrange things. And it was a big, big success. Um, of course, I can say that participants had to uh, 
uh, to follow a half day session dedicated to basics in mathematical modeling, which was the pillar and the fundamentals of the training. But at the end of the training pass, we got excellent feedbacks from participants and we, we had to organize uh, another session. So this is an example of how we can retain talents by uh, simply training because of course, um, I would say that remuneration is by chance not uh, the only, only lever to attract and retain talents. And then I would like to explain what we also do in terms of project for assessing digital skills. We were contacted by INAP. INAP is the um, uh, body responsible for organizing uh, the training for the public sector in Luxembourg. So they have to answer the needs of more than 16,000 people, which is really challenging. And um, they ask us to make an assessment of the digital skills needed for this target audience. So we organized the project within two phases. The first one is in coordination with the research at the university, um, who conducts the survey at a large scale uh, through the, the questionnaire that will be sent to 16,000 people. And then at the competence center, we will come in the second phase of the, pro of the project, and we will organize focus groups to get more into details and to get answers to very tricky questions. So this is another example of what can be done and to properly uh, give all the tools and uh, write the reports um, in an efficient manner. So it was very important and key for the INAP to get this survey to be able to draw uh, a training plan. So um, that's all for me today. So thanks a lot for your attention. Of course, I remain at your disposal in case you have questions. You can contact me, write to the Competence Center or write to on LinkedIn, whatever you want. Uh, I will be available and very, very happy to answer your questions. Thank you so much. And you have a question in, in, in the chat. I'll let you answer this uh, after. Okay. Because I have a question and I think it's important. Is what what would what is your biggest challenge uh, that you are facing for development IT skill in Luxembourg? Um, in Luxembourg, yeah. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, the biggest challenge we have is to uh, meet the needs and the offer because we have the feeling as training center that we are not at the watershed of um, needs and proposals. There is a, a gap and a misunderstanding between what experts and professors as well can propose and what is needed. Because we have the feeling from our clients that they are completely aware that they have gaps to fill in, but they don't know how. And when we propose a course, we give a detailed content, but sometimes they have the difficulty to transpose it uh, into very concrete examples for their business. And that's why it's very important, and I completely agree with Mauro, that we have to mix um, and to combine um, the academic research and approach with so very case. practical examples Efficient. and the expertise yeah. of professionals. And yes. that's what we want to do at the Competence Center. Yes, and, and that's it. That is the ecosystem and the DIH is part of it as well. And this is why we are paying a lot of attention on this subject and topic. And then we are inviting you, all of you, because we are also, uh, we have the duty to make that gap known between the, the, cl the clients, the company and uh, all you guys who are providing this kind of, uh, of information. So, um, yeah. So that's it. Um, I'll let you answer the question uh, that no, you have you. there. Yes, thank you so much, Anne. And I am going to um, so uh, talk about what we are going to have next week, right? So um, 
Today's webinars, as you saw, uh, closes the section three, which is, which was really very important about how uh, to attract the right talent, how to improve the existing skill, how to rely on an ecosystem. So next Thursday, so we go back to Thursday. Today was exceptionally uh, on Wednesday. Uh, it is going to be a new uh, section. Uh, that new section will be completely dedicated to uh, the technologies and what kind of technologies we will be using uh, for industry and in the frame of industry 4.0, right? So we will start with a specific session dedicated to... Um, um, sorry, I'm going to flip this one. So um, dedicated to... Um, Moving toward the digital factory, so what kind of uh, technology, IoT, VR, AR, of course robotic, of course AI and data analytics. Um, we will have uh, so guests from, so Mathieu de Boeuf Rouchon from Altran, Thilo Stieber from Atos and Conrad Gross from Fanuc. Both, all of them, they will be really explaining to us what kind of technology and why it is important to use this technology in industry 4.0 and what is the impact on the productivity of industrial manufacturing companies with this i would like to say thank you so much for everyone for the for our guest and speaker thanks again for the great information and insights that you shared with us and thank you for all our participants see you next week thank you bye bye bye, -bye. bye. Bye.